system. These are my friends. We're all volunteers at the museum. We do a lot of neat things. But my favorite thing is working for Dr. Hoffman. Dr. Hoffman is an entomologist. That means he studies insects. <laughs> What is an insect? Well, an insect is a kind of an arthropod. That is to say, it has uh, uh, a sort of a rigid body shell with its muscles inside and a body which is divided into segments. Normally, they're divided into a fairly discrete head on the front end, a part that the legs are attached to called the thorax, and then the rear end of the body, which is uh, somewhat long and has no legs on it at all, called the abdomen. But basically, uh, any sort of uh, animal with uh, six legs and a hard body shell, usually with wings and always with an antennae. Is a spider an insect? Spiders belong to a different group of arthropods, which are characterized by having no antennae, and they have different types of mouth parts and different body segmentation. Superficially, you can distinguish them by having uh, four or five pairs of legs as opposed to three. And of course, the fact they have no antennae is an easy, easy giveaway. Why are so many people afraid of insects? People get bad impressions from being bitten by mosquitoes and horseflies and things like that, and just simply transfer this negative uh, feeling onto other insects. Like everything else, like uh, snakes, spiders, everything else, uh, we are culturally indoctrinated to be afraid of them and have negative feelings. Insects are very much like us in terms of their biochemistry, their structure, uh, behavior. They have the same problems that we do. They face the same uh, emergencies in life. They have the same concerns with providing for their children and all this. And if you can personalize them into making the point that they are really not that much different from us. And you know, you can even go to the point of saying that a female mosquito is not biting you out of maliciousness. She's biting you to get uh, food supply for the eggs that she's going to lay. So she's just being a good mother. And of course, you have to be pretty tolerant to accept this, but it's a step in the right direction. But once you become familiar with something, well, then it's no longer something to be f feared or, or hated. What would the world be like without insects? Practically all the ecosystems would collapse instantly. Well, so many uh, entire ecosystems are based on uh, insects near the bottom of the food chain, that they are involved in, create, in uh, transformation of plant material with the stored energy into animal tissue for larger animals to eat. So if you took at that critical link in the chain that's doing all this energy conversion, then all of the other organisms, including us, would probably uh, uh, suffer extremely. Bees are insects. Most of the uh, types of plants that have uh, conspicuous flowers are insect pollinated. So this would include a large number of fruits and vegetables, which would not be pollinated otherwise without insects. Without insects, there will be no fruit. Whoa. How do scientists go about studying insects? Uh, starting a collecting campaign uh, would be one of the first steps. We use such things as the traditional butterfly net, which works well for flying insects, butterflies, dragonflies, and things of that sort. Then we also use a rather heavier gauge canvas bag net, which is called a sweep net, which uses to get them in grass and low vegetation and whatnot. We uh, also use dip nets for aquatic insects and sains and things like that, which uh, get the uh, species living in the water. Um, we, for night flying insects, use some sort of artificial light, like a Coleman lantern or a black light attached to your automobile battery. Or um, for the small species that live in the leaf litter, we frequently put in what are called pitfalls, which are buckets sunk into the ground and provided with a certain amount of preservative. And um, the insects and spiders and millipedes walking around at night fall into these and they're extremely successful and get a lot of things that a person would never, ever get uh, simply by hand collecting. Um, one of the traditional ways is just simply turning rocks, turning logs, peeling bark, and picking insects up that you see uh, out walking. That's, that's successful too. How do scientists keep track of everything they collect? 
Well, once uh, specimens have been taken into the collection and properly prepared and put up and uh, identified, then they are uh, put in some sort of data retrieval system. It can be as complicated as an electronic database, or it can be something as simple as a set of three by five index cards. Insects that have hard bodies like bugs, uh, beetles, things like this are normally put on pins because they're pretty durable and they stay on the pin nicely. Soft-bodied things, the uh, adults of stoneflies and mayflies, things of this sort, are usually put into alcohol because when you dry them, their soft bodies tend to shrivel up and um, become deformed and they don't look so good. Insects are a lot of fun to collect and study, but the important thing to remember is that they are part of nature's ecosystem and they are living organisms and we should take their lives with some respect and not kill them needlessly. And um, as far as um, studying insects at your age, it's probably best to look at them, perhaps keep them in captivity for a short while and see what they do, and then release them. Because in order to put up specimens for scientific study, it's necessary to have good training, uh, good uh, reference books to tell you what's needed to be done, how to do it properly, otherwise the insects will be killed needlessly. Just look at them in the field, let them go. You can also explore the world of insects through both television shows, books and by visiting the Virginia Museum of Natural History at Martinsville, 